Fat Embolism, Wikipedia Audio A fat embolism is a type of embolism in which the embolus consists of fatty material. They are often caused by physical trauma such as fracture of soft tissue trauma, and burns. Fat embolism syndrome is distinct from the presence of fat emboli. Symptoms usually occur 1-3 days after a traumatic injury and are predominantly pulmonary, neurological, dermatological, and hematological. The syndrome manifests more frequently in closed fractures of the pelvis or long bones. Clinical manifestation of fat embolism syndrome can manifests from 12 hours to 3 days after diagnosis of the underlying clinical disease. The three most characteristic features are, respiratory distress, neurological features, and skin petechiae. Respiratory distress can vary from mild distress which requires supplemental oxygen to severe distress which requires mechanical ventilation. For neurologic features, those who have FES may become lethargic, restless with a drop in Glasgow coma scale due to cerebral edema rather than cerebral ischemia. Therefore, neurological signs are not lateralis to one side of the body. In the severe form of cerebral odma, a person may become unresponsive. Petechiae rash usually happens in 50% of the patients. Such skin manifestation is temporary and can disappear within one day. The fat embolism syndrome can be divided into three types. Orthopedic injuries especially fractures of the long bones are the most common cause of fat embolism syndrome. The rates of fat embolism in long bone fractures varies from 1% to 30%. The mortality rate of fat embolism syndrome is approximately 10-20%. However, Fat globules have been detected in 67% of those with orthopedic trauma and can reach as high as 95% if the blood is sampled near the fracture site. As the early operative fixation of long bone fractures become a common practice, the incidence of FES has been reduced to 0.9% to 11%. Clinical Presentation other rare causes of fat embolism syndrome are Once fat particles enter the blood circulation, it can lodge at various sites of the body, most commonly in the lungs. However, it can also enters the brain, skin, eyes, kidneys, liver, and heart circulation, causing capillary damage, and subsequently organ damage in these areas. There are two theories that describes the formation of a fat embolus. Sublinical FES, it manifests as reduced partial pressure of oxygen on arterial blood gas with deranged blood parameters associated with fever, pain, discomfort, tachypnoia, tachycardia. However, there is no respiratory distress. However, it is often confused with post-operative symptoms of fever, pain, and discomfort. Fat embolism is presence of fat particles in the microcirculation of the body. Meanwhile, fat embolism syndrome is the clinical manifestation as the result of fat particles lodging in the body microcirculation. There are three major diagnostic criteria proposed for fat embolism syndrome. However, none of them are validated and accepted universally. However, Good and Wilson's criteria for fat embolism become more commonly used when compared to the other two diagnostic criteria. Major criteria Minor criteria A least two positive major criteria plus one minor criteria or four positive minor criteria are suggestive of fat embolism syndrome. Fat embolism syndrome is a clinical diansis. There are no laboratory tests sensitive or specific enough to diagnose FES. 
such laboratory tests are only used to support the clinical diagnosis only. Chest X-ray may show diffuse interstitial infiltrates while chest CT scan will show diffuse vascular congestion and pulmonary edema. Bronchoalveolar lavage has been proposed to look for fat droplets in alveolar macrophages however it is time consuming and is not specific to fat embolism syndrome. Looking for fat globules in sputum and urine is also not specific enough to diagnose FES. For those treated conservatively with immobilization of long bone fractures, the incidence of FES is 22%. Early operative fixation of long bone fractures can reduce the incidence of FES especially with the usage of internal fixation devices. Patients undergoing urgent fixation of long bone fractures has a rate of 7% of acute respiratory distress syndrome when compared to those undergoing fixation after 24 hours. However, Movement of the fracture ends of the long bones during the operative fixation can cause transient increase of fat emboli in the blood circulation. Cytokines are persistently elevated if the long bone fractures is treated conservatively using immobilization. The cytokine levels would return to normal after operative fixation. Although ream nailing increases pressure in the metallary cavity of the long bones, it does not increase the rates of FES. Other methods such as drilling of holes in the bony cortex, lavaging bone marrow prior to fixation, and the use of tourniquets to prevent embolization have not been shown to reduce the rates of FES. Severe burns, liver injury, closed chest cardiac massage, bone marrow transplantation, liposuction, parental lipid infusion, decompression sickness, extracorporeal circulation, acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis, alcoholic liver disease, prolonged corticosteroid therapy, sickle cell disease, carbon tetrachloride poisoning, osteomyelitis. Corticosteroid therapy such as methylprednisolone has been proposed for the treatment of FES however it is controversial. Corticosteroid can be used to limit free fatty acid levels, stabilizing membranes, and inhibit leukocyte aggregation. A meta-analysis conducted in 2009 reported prophylactic corticosteroids can reduce the risk of FES by 77%. However, there is no difference in mortality, infection, and avascular necrosis when compared to the control group. However, a randomized trial conducted in 2004 reported no differences in FES incidence when comparing treatment with the control group. Administration of corticosteroids for two to three days is not associated with increased rates of infection. However, there is insufficient data to support the use of methiprednisolone once FES is established. Heparin has been used in the prevention of venous thrombosis in post-operative patients, however its regular use in those with FES has been contraindicated due to increased risk of bleeding in those suffering from polytrauma. Mechanical Theory, Following Trauma fat is released directly from the bone marrow into the circulation. This is because after trauma, an elevated pressure in the metallary cavity of the bone causes the release of fat globules into venous system supplying the bone. This explains the obstruction of the fat emboli in the lung capillaries. However, it does not explain the fat embolism in other parts of the body because the small diameters of lung capillaries does not allow the fat emboli to pass through lung circulation back into the left ventricle of the heart to be pumped throughout the body. For those without a patent foramen ovale, fat emboli still can be found in other parts of the body apart from the lungs. If fat globules obstructs 80% of the lung capillary network, it will cause acute right heart failure which resulted in death. 
Obstruction of fat globules in the lung capillaries can cause an increase in lung capillary pressures. This increase in pressure causes lung to be more stiff, and increases the workload of the right heart. The back pressure on the right heart causes right heart dilatation through COR pulmonal which causes acute right heart failure. Causes Placement of inferior vena cava has been proposed to reduce the amount of emboli going into the lung vascular system, however, this method has not been studied in detail. Once FES develops, the person should be admitted into intensive care unit, preferably with central venous pressure monitoring. CVP monitoring would be helpful to guide the volume resuscitation. Supportive treatment is the only proven treatment method. Supplemental oxygen can be given if a person has mild respiratory distress. However, if a person has severe respiratory distress, either continuous positive pressure ventilation, or mechanical ventilation using positive end expiratory pressure may be indicated. Fluid replacement is required to prevent shock. Volume resuscitation with human albumin is recommended because it can restore blood volume in the circulatory system while also binds to free fatty acids in order to reduce lung injuries. In severe cases, dobutamine should be used to support the right ventricular failure. Frequent Glasgow Coma Scale charting is required access the neurological progression of a person with FES. A placement of intracranial pressure monitor may be helpful to direct the treatment of cerebral odma. In 1861, Zinker first reported on the autopsy findings of fat droplets found in the lungs of a railway worker who died due to severe thoracoabdominal crush injury. In 1873, Bergman diagnosed fat embolism clinically in a patient with fractured femur. In 1970, Good defined the characteristics of this phenomenon. Good later modified the fat embolism criteria together with Wilson, thus producing Good and Wilson's criteria for fat embolism syndrome in 1974. In 1983, Sean Feld suggested a scoring system for the diagnosis of fat embolism syndrome. In 1987, Lindick proposed another scoring system that diagnosed fat embolism syndrome by using respiratory changes alone. However, none of them become universally accepted in the medical community. Pathophysiology Diagnosis Axillary or subconjunctival petechiae, hyposemia PaO2 60 mm Hg, FiO2 equals 0.4, central nervous system depression disproportionate to hyposemia, pulmonary edema. Good and Wilson's criteria for fat embolism syndrome. Treatment Prevention Supportive treatment History Tachycardia more than 110 beats per minute, pyrexia more than 38.5 degrees C, fat globules present in urine, changes in renal function, a drop in hemoglobin, a drop in hematocrit values, a drop in platelet values, increasing erythrocyte sedimentation rate, fat globules present in the sputum, Emboli present in the retina on fundoscopy. PubMed